I think we've seriously underestimated Tyrese. Maxie! What did you say his name was? Maxie? Maxie. And it's abundantly clear that this kid is special. God, it's almost like he gets shot out of a cannon when he gets the ball. He's like a flash of bright light. A massive source of energy. He was always smiling. He is truly incendiary. A sensationally talented young man. Who's paying for the Philadelphia 76ers. And as of late, he's been kicking ass in the NBA playoffs. It's like he's saying we are way out of schedule, man. And um, maybe next time you will estimate me. Tyrese Maxey's sophomore NBA campaign has been an often thrilling upgrade of opportunity and production. The Sixers gave him more responsibility as a player, a 20-minute increase in minutes from last season to this one with a full-time spot in the starting lineup, and he justified it with dramatic leaps in scoring, assists, and rebounds, all while upgrading his efficiency across the board. He does all of that with joy. The supercharged 6'2", 200-pound guard from <clears throat> Kentucky has unending motor and a mentality that seems contagious. He knows only effort and energy, and when he's rolling, he ricochets around the court like a pinball of positivity setting a high score. He's lightning in a bottle. Turn your head and he's gone. Fail to turn your hips and he's gone. His personality and skill as a player make him a natural fit next to the planetary presence of MVP candidate Joel Embiid, one of the strongest gravitational forces in the entirety of basketball. Embiid has been doubled 114 times this season in isolations, which is more than twice as many times as Giannis Antetokounmpo, who's in second. If Joel is drawing breath, He's drawing a double team. And the addition of James Harden in February further set the table for Maxi to be constantly attacking rotating defenders. Because Maxi's essence as a player is defined by persistent movement and attacking spatial advantages, he gobbles up those situations when Embiid and Harden draw extra help. This past season, Maxi was 11th in the NBA in closeout drives per game and third in field goals generated in those situations. If Embiid is Galactus, devouring worlds and powering through obstacles, Maxi is the silver surfer, streaking, zooming, slashing around him. The book on Maxi is that he's not a selfish player by any stretch, but he's a player whose game is and has been tilted towards scoring. He is ultra effective in transition, scoring 1.35 points per possession. He's terrific at creating contact at the rim and outlasting bigger defenders in the air, and he has an uncanny ability to hit max speed while still displaying touch and craftiness in the middle of the floor. But most remarkable, I would say, has been his incredible growth as a shooter between years one and two. He was never a liability, he always displayed touch and an ability to get into his mechanics quickly, it's just that his consistency hadn't really turned the corner. Maxi's growth of efficiency from three in the pick and roll has been steady in the past three years. He shot 14.3% at Kentucky, 35.3% in year one with Philly, and 44.9% in year two. These things begin to stretch the defense towards a player, and as impactful as Maxi's speed is, that shooting improvement combined with his middle game and his finishing paved some pathways to stardom. The Sixers' super soft was a muted presence in rounds one and two of the 2021 NBA playoffs, the capper to his good but not revelatory rookie campaign, but Philly's six-game series with Toronto has spelled out some important themes for the near future. In game one, he set a career playoff high by going 14 of 21 from the field and 5 of 8 from 3 for a whopping 38 points. Game 2 was arguably just as impressive as he went for 23 points and 8 assists, and in Game 3 he tallied 19 points despite struggling with turnovers and some spotty shooting. Those initial outbursts were helped by the fact that Fred Van Vliet, often guarding Maxi, was out there hobbled with an injured hip. A sore hip is not a desirable scenario when Tyrese is rocketing in your direction, but in Games 4 and 5, some key variables changed. Without Van Vliet, Toronto, forced to adjust, rallied around the Sixer family with a pocket full of highly switchable forwards, and that mucked up the Sixer attack. Embiid's injured thumb seemed to affect his on-the-block aggressiveness and subsequent playmaking. And look, I try to be good time Kyle in these videos, nice as can be, but James Harden's selective stardom can be maddening. He was a total no-show in Game 5, hanging Embiid out to dry as he matador drivers into the paint, and as he himself drove to the rim like a fainting
hunting goat, hunting fowls, and then he suddenly comes to life looking like a totally different person in the series clinching game six. Anyway, overall, I think the flow of this series has painted a picture of how much maxi headroom is still available and how it could benefit the Sixers going forward. When all of these negative factors converged, Maxi's production fell back to earth. And then when Harden got his act together and he and Embiid meshed again in game six, suddenly we got another big game from Tyrese. Star players aren't if-then statements. They transcend those occasions when the opponent has worsened the conditions for their team. They make something out of nothing. He has grown significantly in this area in recent years, but Tyrese's ability to come into his own as a self-creator and as an initiator is going to be a big deal for Philadelphia as the season winds down and as they plan for the future. Maxi is unlike many speedster PGs in that he does display touch. He has that crafty middle game and now shooting versatility by his 21st birthday, so the puzzle pieces are forming a perimeter around that last component. As of now, Philly needs him to be aggressive, but he's not being asked to do much drink stirring as an initiator. He's pursuing his own offense while mostly making the initial read without much deliberate manipulation of what's in front of him. He just has to come off the ball at the right time. Falling in the draft the way that he did was a blessing in that he's playing competitive basketball earlier in his career, but for a guard looking to mature in this way, open road to succeed and or fail and on-ball reps in live game scenarios are important. Those can be harder to come by on a playoff team as the postseason is a time to be flexible, but it's not a time to aimlessly tinker. Development and consequences have to be brought along carefully, side by side. For that reason, it's possible that we may not see a significant leap from Maxi in this area until next season or beyond. On. But at peak functionality, Philly looks like an offensive juggernaut, and having two highly effective pillars of offense and playmaking is more than most teams in the NBA can say. But between injuries and inconsistent output, the variance can be wild. Every little bit of pace dictation and playmaking that he can provide in these playoffs will be a major factor for Philadelphia's ability to weather those times when Joel and James are being heavily schemed against in the greater tests that are on the horizon. This is all especially interesting now that Joel Embiid is dealing with yet another serious injury in this second round against the grinding physicality of the Miami Heat. It'll be an immensely valuable litmus test and potentially a proving ground for Tyrese Maxey. We're still very early in Maxey's development, but there's reason to believe that if he's given more responsibility, he'll broaden his horizons yet again. And that's an exciting possibility. Let me know if you agree.